The hand-wrist radiograph helps in estimating the skeletal age of bone for determining the physical maturation status of the child. The bone age is of great help to the orthodontist in coordinating the orthodontic therapy with the growth process. The development of several hand-wrist bones, from the appearance of calcification centers to epiphyseal plates closure, occurs throughout the entire postnatal growth period, and therefore provides a useful means of assessing skeletal maturity. Each hand-wrist area has 8 carpals, 5 metacarpals, and 14 phalanges, which make a total of 27 bones. Distal ends of radius and ulna, also appear in the hand-wrist radiograph. Radius and ulna, are the long bones of the forearm. Ulna lies in the medial aspect, and radius in the distal aspect, when the palm is facing front. The carpal bones are arranged in two rows. In distal row, lies the trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate, whereas in proximal row, lies the scaphoid, lunate, triquetral, and pisiform. These small irregular bones, lie in between the long bones of forearm and the metacarpals, which are the long bones. Each of the five metacarpals has a base, shaft, and head. They lie between the carpals, and phalanges, forming the skeletal framework of the palm. Each finger has a proximal phalanx, middle phalanx, and distal phalanx. Middle phalanx is absent in the thumb. The small round bone located in the thumb, embedded in the tendons, is called the sesamoid bone. Leonard Fishman, in 1982, outlined four stages of bone maturation, found at six anatomical sites, mainly located on the thumb, third finger, fifth finger, and radius. Eleven skeletal maturity indicators are found in these six anatomic sites. Stage 1, when epiphysis is as wide as diaphysis, found in proximal and middle phalanx of third finger and middle phalanx of fifth finger. Later there is ossification, in adductor sesamoid of thumb. Next, there is capping of epiphysis in the distal, and middle phalanx of third finger, and middle phalanx of fifth finger. At last, there is fusion of epiphysis and diaphysis in the distal, proximal, and middle phalanx of third finger, and also the radius. Bjork, Grave, and Brown, divided the skeletal development in the hand-wrist area, into nine stages. In stage 1, the epiphysis of the proximal phalanx of the index finger, has the same width as the diaphysis. This stage, occurs approximately 3 years, before the peak of the pubertal growth spurt. In stage 2, the epiphysis of the middle phalanx of the middle finger, is of the same width as the diaphysis. Third stage of development, can be identified by, three distinct ossification areas. These show individual variations, but appear at the same time, during the process of the maturation. There is visible ossification of the pisiform, and hamular process of the hematum. And in radius, with same width of epiphysis, and diaphysis. In fourth stage, there is mineralization of ulnar sesamoid bone, of the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb. Later, there is progressive ossification, of the hamular process of the hematum. The fourth stage is reached shortly before, or at the beginning, of the pubertal growth spurt. During fifth stage, the diaphysis is covered, by the cap-shaped epiphysis. The process begins at the middle phalanx of the third finger, followed by, proximal phalanx of the thumb, and radius.
This stage marks the peak of the pubertal growth spurt. Sixth stage shows union of the epiphysis and diaphysis at the distal phalanx of the middle finger, constituting the end of the pubertal growth. Seventh stage shows union of the epiphysis and diaphysis at the proximal phalanx of the little finger. In eighth stage, there is union of epiphysis and diaphysis at middle phalanx of the middle finger. Ninth stage shows complete union of epiphysis and diaphysis of the radius with completion of skeletal growth. Hag and Teranger noted that stages of ossification of middle phalanx of the third finger follow pubertal growth spurt. The stages of ossification are outlined from stage F to stage I. In stage F, the epiphysis is as wide as the metaphysis. About 40% of the individuals are before peak height velocity or the PHV. Very few are at PHV. Stage FG, the epiphysis is as wide as the metaphysis, and there is a distant medial, or lateral, or both border of the epiphysis, forming a line of demarcation, at right angles to the border. About 90% of the individuals, are one year before, or at PHV. Stage G, the sides of epiphysis are thickened, and there is capping of the metaphysis, forming a sharp edge distally at one, or both sides. About 90% of the individuals are at or one year after PHV. Stage H. Fusion of the epiphysis and metaphysis begins. About 90% of the girls and all the boys are after PHV, but before the end of the pubertal growth spurt. Stage I. Fusion of the epiphysis and metaphysis is completed. All individuals, except a few girls, and the pubertal growth spurt.